Welcome to Switch It Up. That's my dramatic inch. Oh, you're, she's busy. I'm making lunch. <laughs> you said you were hungry. I am, I am hungry. We just got to our new location at a state park. And Sheila is, look at your cooking. I'm cooking, but we are on no sewer, so I'm also conserving water. Look at that. We got pizza. You want me to put pizza in the oven? Yeah, yes. we're conserving water. We should do a video on that at some point. Like, how do we go to like state parks and stuff and conserve water? But that's not what we're doing. What are we doing? Today is like a, like a Todd tip. Like, I, I got inspired. And you've been like getting questions from as we're out and about. Yes. So I figured today could be a Todd's tip day type video. Okay, what is the questions we're answering? We get a lot of questions, so what are we answering today? I don't know. Like, what is the one? If you don't know, then I don't know. Well, you said something when we were driving about the uh, garage. Oh, yes. We get a lot of questions because there's a lot of quack, quack stuff in that garage. <laughs> That's a double quacker. You didn't have to ahead, say the word. I'll just go ahead and quack it myself. <laughs> it will save you the effort. But there's a lot of stuff in that garage. and so we How we organize question. it. How, how it fits in there, in how it. I load it, unload it, that type of stuff. Yes, and just so you know, we are not overweight. We have checked. So, yeah. so before anyone says that, you're oh, being yeah. preemptive. The weight gremlins are out there? <laughs> they are, the weight police, that's what they oh, are. Oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> I will go to the truck, grab some stuff. We'll roll the intro, we'll jump into this, and I'll show you how I'm gonna unload the garage and I'll show you how everything is organized and strapped down and all that fun stuff. Does that sound like a plan? Great. Do you not need me? I can just no, make lunch. Yeah, yeah, I know. I kind of surprised you. But I was feeling inspirational as I was unloading. All right, I, I'm going to go do that. Roll the intro. You're going to see how we organize the garage and deal with all of the stuff we take on the road. Yep, see you later. I'm going to do lunch. <laughs> Roll the intro. A man and a woman left their home To switch things up and go on the road destination we're right on the water this is nice right so we're in Georgia and you're probably wondering because we've never really addressed it what's the garage look like when we unpack and pack so I figured while I unpack I might as well show you our setup as you can see the bikes are nestled in nicely motorcycle if you saw the video of our tie downs on how I added the new tie downs, one wheel actually just sits on the stand, doesn't go anywhere. And there's the first scooter and second scooter. And then up here we have the wonderful kayaks. Those bags are actually our blow up paddle boards. And we're tied in over here with our kayaks being supported by bungees. If you've seen our chairs, so our chairs are tied in there. This stuff up here is all the merchandise that you guys love to, to get. And then our chairs go out on the patio, washer, dryer, and above is the other shelf that we installed. And then everything you see up there, we had a really rough travel day. That stuff fell down. It normally doesn't fall down, um, but it all just kind of sits up there, believe it or not. We can still access the bathroom even though I can just step over all of this stuff and we can use the bathroom on travel days. So there you go. I am going to start unpacking now. Oh, right here, look. These are our chairs stacked on top of our grill, Green Mountain Grill. So we even have that tied in towards the front. So if we don't wanna unpack, we can still access things and take them outside accordingly. We're really, really full in our garage in comparison to most people but it all works. Now it is true, most places, state parks we don't fit into because we're so big, 43 feet, 44. I always say 45, it's just better to be bigger. But in this case, it's not so bad, even with putting the, the back down. We should still have a little room with the person behind us. OK, 
Okay, so we do use one of those tension rods to have a curtain back here, but I thought it would be good for you to see kind of the behind. So how did I hang the kayaks? Well, I messed up the first time and they did pull through. I'm using a screw that's about a little over an inch. And this is hard, pretty hard wood for the top bed area. So I've screwed into that and just using handles. And then I use bungee cords to hold the weight when we drive. So the weight is not held on here on the bed or actually on the seat. Uh, it's held by the bungee. So I actually lower this enough that the kayaks are free suspended as we travel down the road and not putting in the extra weight on these. And then when we're at our spot, I'll actually take this and go up to give ourselves a little more headroom and then we can actually stay in this with the bikes out and everything leaving the kayaks in and still go in and out of this with no problem i have to duck a little because i'm a little taller sheila can come in and out with no issues so that's how we get around leaving the kayaks inside now versus putting them on the back when we first started out putting them on the back didn't always work out that's how we rubbed the bottom of our kayaks off so much so there's the the behind the scenes of that as well. I do use these two tie downs on each side and then the bikes actually are strapped in this way, strapped along the side and then strapped down. And then I use, I never threw these away. So since I never threw these away, I use them as padding. So I have the big one still up on top. This one I use like if I need to work underneath the RV, it's great to have to lay on the ground. And then it uses, I use it as a buffer between the bikes and stuff. I learned that the hard way because my bags are all scratched up from when the bikes used to fall into the motorcycle. It really hurt my heart. So my first six months of learning how to tie things down was probably the biggest learning curve I've ever had. But that's kind of how uh, we handle it. The bikes themselves, I got a pad that goes in between the two. And then this goes on the back of my truck when we want to use and put the bikes in the back. So I use that against the wall to pad the bikes to be ratcheted strap. So nothing is rubbing when we're on move days. Honestly, it looks like a lot, but it can all be taken out within 25 minutes. And then I put all the straps away. Oh, and again, we are a Momentum 395 MS with, I think it's a 14 foot garage. But when the back slants down, this is the space back here is not as usable. It's actually, you're dealing with about a little over 13 feet right in that capacity. I'd say 13 and a half feet, to be honest. And with the washer and the dryer set up in here, you can see I can't push the motorcycle all to this wall. So the motorcycle has to ride in the center. And the front wheel actually goes to the, the middle of the washer and dryer. So. That's how I've uh, kind of balanced and strided that. So. Okay, I know what you're thinking. How did Todd, how does you, how do you ride with this? I got this wheel dock. And then what I did was in the center area, I backed the screw out just enough that the whole mechanism will slide in there. So it helps prevent the whole motorcycle moving forward. Then I use a ratchet strap go around and then I go towards the front where there's another tie down that secures the whole front of the motorcycle then the other two tie downs are the ones that I added and that centers it so now the bike doesn't ever move I use the two tie down straps in the back which really help but this setup the motorcycle is perfect on move days so and then this stuff never moves because of the way it's ratcheted to the side. That's, that's good to know. Hey guys. And then I'll bring the lights back. I used inch and a half lag bolts. Um, I did not hit metal on the back. I did hit metal on the front, so I'm thinking we should be good to go. More than adequate 
with a 9 16th lag bolt. I got this wonderful tote. It says ratchet straps. And I use the tote to put all the ratchet straps in, set it off to the side, and so everything's kind of kept together. See, I bet you didn't know, after two and a half years, we actually figured this stuff out. But if you're watching, this has got to help somebody because nobody showed me how to do any of this. And I wish I would have had some forethought and some knowledge on how to keep things from moving around. Some of you might ask about this shelf that's above the... And so, you can't see this very well, but I'll try. This goes up, it's a curtain rod, honestly. And I used some short screws and I put them in here and used those. And then I made the shelf on top and that's where everything will ride. And so like tackle box, things that I don't use very often sit up in this area. And you're always wondering, well, where do I put those? You know, if I wanna keep the table that goes in the center, where do I keep that, those legs that rattle around everywhere? I found a place for those too. So they sit in the the curtain or the um, hangers that I have here. So it's actually a pretty good setup. I mean, the outside edge is held together here. And then I put a board on one side to support the other side where the bathroom sits. And then I use these wonderful hangers so I can hang things up on them and everything just stays right there. It's no issue at all. So travel day is always, now you're like, what about all the chargers and stuff for your e-bikes and things? Oh, I'll get to all that. Let me pull out the bikes real quick and we'll go to well, how we store things back here too. I'm using motorcycle covers for all of our outside stuff. We basically will lock everything towards the rig, use motorcycle covers on all of our bikes and scooters and anything that we might leave outside. And if you're thinking, well, people can cut through those and steal the bikes anyway. Yeah, yeah, they can. And I have cameras that catch that too. That's the reason we have the cameras. But not only that, I also have hidden air tags on the bikes. So if it ever happens, we might get ourselves a million view video because we'll go hunt those people down just for fun. We'll make a whole video out of it, a whole adventure. So if you're thinking about just coming to swipe the bikes, yeah, all right. Game on! <laughs> that pull out Sheila's bike. And then I'll show you how we organize this other stuff back here. Everything's unloaded. Bikes are all situated. I'm going to leave the scooters in because it might rain tonight. Mm, there's no sense taking those out right now. But I am going to talk about storage because storage is king, especially in a garage. And we found a system that works really, really well. You can find it at the container store of all places. And what it is, it's one single track. So if you take it, remember the walls are not very thick in your wonderful toy hauler or any RV by that matter. So on the inside walls, uh, basically I found a stud. The studs are really small. They're about, what is it? Maybe an inch and a half by an inch and a half. So you find a stud and on that stud, you can screw in one track and it goes from top to bottom. These actually baskets, they lift off and there's a little area right there where it attaches into the track. That's right here. So you can organize your system based on how high you need things and they're easy to move around. Probably not so easy with one hand, but that's locked in. So now we're able to do all of our organization based on what we might need. So cleaning supplies generally on one side, that's on this side. Down here, we have these totes. These totes are what we found at Ikea and Ikea makes them and what we did, you can stack them. So I attached them to the wall as well. It holds all of our chargers for all of our E stuff. Even our Green Mountain Grill, holds all of that stuff that when we're looking for it, we know where it is. The bottom one is shoes that we'll use outside. We don't use them all the time. It's just an area that you can just throw shoes in so they're tucked away and nice and neat. This side over here, again, the same track system is used and this is generally grilling stuff, outside things like that we might need to hold down uh, the awnings, things like that. And then up here, 
as you can see, we use this area above the door. Believe it or not, none of this stuff has ever fallen. And it is, it has not just the normal baskets. It actually has like a grid that you can put on there and then put hooks on things that you might need. And it works great. Nothing has ever fallen off. So I have like the keys to our scooters, things that we might need um, sporadically on the outside. They're just hanging right here above the door as you're coming in and out of the garage. And actually this system works really, really well. And if you're going to screw on the outside of your RV, remember these walls are not very thick. And so your screws, no more, trust me, no more than maybe an inch and a quarter. And that's all you need to use this system that's up here. So it works really well. Don't overload it with a ton of weight, but I'm just saying those, I put the track all the way to the ground. The weight is being supported to the ground and then the screws hold it to the wall. Never had one issue with them. And we've had it since day one. The Dyson hangs next to it. We strap down the, the wonderful three-step uh, ladder that we have for doing everyday living. So that's our garage. Bathroom, nothing, 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 nothing normal. It's just a bathroom. It's just tiny. We did put a medicine cabinet in. Say hi to yourself. All this is actually functional in everyday life, living on the road. And as you can see, I can walk in between the kayaks not hitting my head. We can do laundry. We can do everything we want. And this is without pulling everything out right now because we're only here for a few days. So we probably will leave the back down and the patio, put out a couple lawn chairs, not use the big white ones. And just enjoy our time here with this amazing view. So hopefully this helps. Like, comment, subscribe, be a doer of all things. And if this, you know, is helpful, I suppose you would subscribe. I don't know. We always do something different and you don't know what other tips I might show up here on Todd's tip days. You just uh, you just don't know. So, you guys have a blessed day and we'll talk to you soon. We're out.